Excuse me? If this works, this is absolutely amazing. This is not a life hack for musicians. This is just something that can drastically better the lives of all the people. Hello everyone, welcome back. I've once again decided to turn to TikTok to figure out how to better my life, which is never a great idea, but hey, if nothing else, those viral short form videos can certainly be entertaining. Last time I tried out guitar specific things. Today we're looking at general music hacks, tricks, and stuff like that. Let's see what we got. First, we got a music trick from Landon Purifoy. He says, put your speaker to your mouth and go crazy. Okay, so now we're prompted to recreate this effect using the synth part he's playing and our phones. This is essentially the same way that a guitar talk box works. You run a tube from a speaker into your mouth and then kind of shape the sound into words like this. Okay, well, let's try this out, but I'm gonna attempt to put it in a musical setting and see if we can get a little jam going here. Next up, Travis Hamilton asks if we guys knew about this. Did y'all know if you get tired of listening to a certain song, as far as like holding, you can push the star key and it'll change it. For country, press one. For pop, press two. For instrument, thank you. You can change your selection at any time by pressing the star key. Um, excuse me? If this works, this is absolutely amazing. This is not a life hack for musicians. This is just something that can drastically better the lives of all the people. The other day I sat on hold with American Express for like 90 minutes, the same song looping over and over again every 30 seconds. This would have made that experience so much better. Let's give him a call. American Express. Well, didn't do anything, very disappointing. That would be a zero out of 10 hack. Now, I'm gonna give you a music hack of my own here. The way that you get good at music faster is stop trying to look for shortcuts, buck up, and just do the work. And if you would like to use the resource that I recommend, it is the resource that I created. And today is the last day of the back to school sale going on over my course platform, samuraiguitar3.com. Over there, I've got five courses that offer a deep dive into the method I use for making music. If you wanna understand the building blocks of music theory and how it works for guitar, my courses, The Rudiments and Beyond the Basics are made with you in mind. I've also got two courses that look specifically at soloing. The Craft of Soloing looks at phrasing and musical storytelling, while my newest course, The Style of Soloing, is a look at the fancy stuff you can add to your solos to bring them to life. Everything is professionally animated and there are interactive elements to make the tough stuff easy to understand. And today is the last day of the Back to School sale. Use promo code Back to School 22 on any individual course to get them half off, or use that same promo code on the bundles to get multiple courses for the normal price of one. Find more information at samuraiguitar3.com and links as always are in the description. Anyways, let's get back to it. Moving on, we've got a secret music industry hack and the user says they swear to God it works. Okay, I'm spilling the tea. Here's how to become an overnight sensation in the music industry. All you need to do is have your mom or dad already be in the industry and then it's like everything's easy for you. Yes, nepotism. Yes, queen. Okay, first of all, did you notice how everything on her person was color coordinated? I found that cool. But I'm gonna give you a serious answer to this one here. From my subjective experience, none of the successful musicians I know have family members in the industry. However, there are three specific traits that would seem to be a recipe for success. Number one, the eye of the tiger. It's the drive, the single-minded focus to achieve your goals above anything else. Number two, a keen business sense, the ability to adapt, change, take calculated risks, and see opportunities that other people would miss. Number three, undeniable musical skill. You don't have to be the best musician in the world, but when it's time to perform, you gotta be able to do that at an indisputably high level. It's very common to find people with one of these traits. It's somewhat rare to find people with two, but the handful of people I've known who found success in this grueling industry have all three, and that's incredibly rare. Now luck can certainly come into play, and maybe that comes in the form of a parent working in the industry. It's certainly gonna be a leg up, but I don't think that you're gonna have a long and successful career based on something like that alone. And did you see how her nails matched her Kermit hat? Great touch. Next up, this fella says, felt like maybe I wasn't meant to know this life hack. Just made the most incredible discovery. All you do is you take a piece of cardboard like this and you have to put a hole in it so that you can put it on a record player. 
and then you put it, just listen to this. Hey, we're the Secret Cardboard Band, and you're listening to Cardboard. Two, three. Woo! We are the Secret Cardboard Band. We live inside each. Be- okay, a little bit of humor here. I'm a guy who likes jokes, but this actually isn't a terrible hack. If you can come up with some sort of short, dumb, funny video that incorporates your original music into it, that's not a bad way to build an audience. So, you know, something to think about. You know what? I just remembered a fun little record player trick of my own. If you get your record spinning. Then lightly press a Canadian dollar bill against the grooves. You can ever so slightly hear the music. Check it out. Completely pointless, and it's probably not good for your records, or your money for that matter, but uh, hey, there's a party trick for you if you ever find yourself at a very quiet party. Henry with a three says he wholeheartedly believes that serious artists cannot ignore this if they want long-term success, hashtag music hacks. NFTs are permanently changing the way the music industry works. Let's say that you're an artist that just caught some buzz and you want a million dollars to advance your music career. Traditionally, you would go shop yourself to record labels and find someone who's willing to take a bet on you and your music and invest an amount of money that they will then recoup every penny you will pay back on top of you sacrificing the majority rights to your master. Yeah, I mean, from my understanding, this is correct, though I don't know that labels are giving out nearly as many big deals like this in this economy, but uh, let's see what he has to say now. Now you can make 10,000 NFTs of your cover art, sell them for a hundred bucks each, make a million dollars instantly, keep all of it, and give away like 20% of the royalties from that album within those NFTs forever. So now instead of an arbitrary record label winning off of your success, your fans are winning off of your success. Okay, to the uninitiated, the very, very simplified explanation is that an NFT is basically a way to show that you own a digital file through the same technology that cryptocurrency uses. So Henry is saying that you can create 10,000 NFTs your song, which still means infinite people can download, stream, and listen to it, but only 10,000 people can own the NFT and receive all the benefits that that provides, assuming they pay $100 for it. I've said my piece on the nature of NFTs and the culture around them. I'm not gonna get into that today. My issue with this is that that getting 10,000 people to spend $100 on something like this would require an absolutely massive audience. As a comparison, I launched my first guitar course about three years ago, which is comparable in price when it's not on sale, like it is now, promo code back to school 22. But the videos I've advertised it on have tens and tens of millions of views, and I haven't even come close to selling 10,000 of them. And you gotta think that I have the kind of audience that would be quite interested in something like this. It's not a perfect comparison. You can resell NFTs and tie in royalties and other things like Henry had mentioned, but still, to sell 10,000 NFTs, which currently appeal to a very limited market at $100 is not anything, in my opinion, that's within the realm of possibility to anyone but the biggest artists out there. I'm not convinced that the kind of people who are watching this video and taking this advice would sell more than a handful of them, even at a significantly lower price. It's also worth pointing out that this is a very divisive technology. Any artist I've seen go down this route gets a lot more hate than love, justifiable or not. So you better be sure that the money that you're generating is worth that kind of reaction. My personal belief is that this technology is still far too young for there to be much practical benefit to musicians. However, I will agree with Henry that you probably should look at as many options outside of working with a label as possible. Next up, we've got simple musical instrument. Well, there were multiple notes coming out of one band, and I'm not sure how you would tune it, but let's try this out anyways. It was a completely pointless waste of time for myself and anyone who watched this. Next up, we got a crazy musician hack. If you're a musician on TikTok, you need to hear this crazy hack. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's a solid hack. And trust me, I've come to know a good hack quite well. Last month, I got COVID as well as another respiratory virus at the same time. And then during that period, my two-year-old also kicked me right in the esophagus. So yeah, I sounded like if Chewbacca had chain smoked for 50 years, I swear some of the sounds I was making would have registered on the Richter scale. I would not recommend that. All right, this feels illegal, but it's a total hack. Musicians, are you tired of having shitty gear to record your songs with? 
and not having a million dollars to buy new gear? Just go to Guitar Center. They literally just leave all these guitars hanging around. Pick your favorite one and record yourself in the recording studio they have there. And voila, you have just added a $800 guitar to your track for free. Okay, so a while back, I used to work in a music store, so let me offer some thoughts on this. If you're gonna do this, please, please do it respectfully. If it's like a Tuesday morning and there's nobody there, you're much less likely to annoy any employees or any other shoppers. If you use a very, and I mean very minimal setup that doesn't take up a lot of space and can be moved easily if asked, again, you'll be less likely to annoy. If you're a regular customer and have some rapport with the staff and you ask them if you can do this, less likely to annoy. I would personally err on the side of doing this as infrequently as possible. Working in a music store isn't always the most fun. Everybody's just trying to get by. Please don't make life harder for the staff or other customers. Okay, we've got a tip here for recording background vocals, which is great because I hate what it sounds like whenever I have to do backup vocals, or most singing for that matter. Let's see what he has to say. On vocals, record a layer and then take a step back and then record another layer and then keep going and repeating until you have as many takes as you want. But what you end up with is this really dense sort of cloud-like vocal with a lot of dimension. Cool, this is actually pretty interesting. You get a different tone when you're different distances from the mic. Let's give it a try. Background vocal. Background vocal. Background vocal. Background vocal. Background vocal. And now here's that vocal part all together in a musical setting. And I've also recorded myself singing the same thing, but at the same distance from the mic. I'll play them one after another, see if you can hear the difference. The impact is pretty subtle and it's a limited experiment, but I feel like they do blend a bit better at a different distance. Honestly, it's a pretty good hack. I will probably use it next time I have to record background vocals. And last for today, Dury Music has a life hack for musicians. Musician life hack for you. If you need your hands to play guitar, but you also want to play harmonica. Wait, that's how Bob Dylan did that? This is as good as I can get it. Let's go. Well, my mouth hurts and now I feel self-conscious about having an abnormally small mouth. I also feel like there's gotta be a better way of doing this. If only somebody could invent something that would fix this problem. If only. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, trying out TikTok music hacks and tricks. Remember, today is the last day of the Back to School sale. Over my course platform, you can get any course half off with promo code Back to School 22 or use that same promo code on any of the bundles to get multiple courses for the normal price of one. You can find more information at samuraiguitar3.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Thank you all for watching. To check out another video like this one, hit that link up there to get some of that Sammy G merch. You can find that at shopsamuraiguitarist.com. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.